I am horny for death. I'm also fucking terrified of death, for all the reasons you might expect me to be terrified, but I've spent so much time wallowing in the idea of dying, and all the various ways in which I could die, that I've come to think of death as still terrifying, but so strangely cozy. I'm not suicidal. I'm in no rush to die. My survival instincts seem to be in order, just not calibrated for capitalism. I don't think any reasonable living creature knows how the fuck to survive under capitalism, given how capitalism is, uh, killing all of the animals, including humans. Except pigeons, I guess, and roaches, they seem to know how to survive under capitalism. Good on them. The thing is that, it's more like, I've come to expect that I'll die, and that I'll quite possibly die rather soon. I don't want to, but I don't feel like I've got that much of a choice. So I think, well, if I'm likely gonna die an early death anyway, what's the sexiest way to go out? Oh dear. I know I need a therapist, probably, most likely, most definitely, but we all know I can't afford that. What is this? A world where people can have uh, the things that they need to be mentally stable and physically healthy? Ah! <laughs> I'm so fucking dead. Anyway, here's a video about the missing. The Missing is a video game that came out last year. It was directed by Sweary, some guy who you might have heard of. I'd heard of him, but I've never played a game of his before. This was a good video game, so I should probably go have a look at that uh, other game. People say that's a good game too. In this game, you play as the only video game protagonist who is not straight, Jackie Jameson Macfield, or JJ for short. JJ and her girlfriend, Emily, are running away together to get married on a secret island, but Emily disappears in the dead of night. This pleasingly simple meet cute gives away to a nightmare world, as JJ goes searching for Emily and fucking dies. Anyway, it keeps going, because thanks to this uh, moose doctor, JJ has been given the power to regenerate her body. Knowing absolutely nothing about what would happen in the game, I wondered, what the hell is that for? I've played Limbo and Inside, and while I prefer Inside, I didn't particularly care for either, in part because they're not particularly challenging in ways that I find interesting. You get all the gruesome death animations and etc, but that feels pretty cheap to me, because there's not really much consequence to it. You respawn on the nearest platform, and it doesn't really serve the gameplay, just the game's aesthetic, which, you know, is good. I don't hate either game, I just don't love them. They're fine. So I thought this regeneration mechanic to be interesting, but a bit eh. Like, okay, so you're just handing me a faster respawn button. I pressed on because people said this game was great, and I can't pass up the opportunity to play as the only not straight video game character. Then I arrived at this puzzle. JJ's body weighs too much to crawl across this ramp and under the spiky wire. There's no way to get through because the spikes can't be avoided. Well, right. So I set about killing myself, as you do, or at least as I do when I can't solve a video game puzzle, and watched JJ flop to the ground in pieces. Oh dear, I got really, really fucking excited at this. <clears throat> So, um, The Missing is a psychological horror game about a suicidal trans lesbian teenager uh, struggling with a queer-phobic 
family and school life. Excitement is probably not the reaction that it wanted from me whatsoever, but that is nevertheless the reaction that this puzzle elicited from my confused brain. I was excited and impressed. My past experiences playing puzzle platformers have taught me spikes bad. Do not touch, and if you touch, well, you didn't mean to do that, we'll just put you back here. What this puzzle quite elegantly taught me, as JJ's blood and limbs spilt all about the environment, was that I'd best forget that lesson. Brutal dismemberment of JJ's body is either required to progress, or incidentally almost unavoidable, and the only instance in which you'll see a traditional respawn is if JJ is destroyed as a head, or if you fail certain scripted events. A similar level of gore in Limbo and Inside had only proved to mildly irk me as I witnessed the same death animations and retried over and over. But in The Missing, watching JJ die over and over and regenerate repeatedly was certainly disturbing, yet remarkably mesmerizing. Because here, those gruesome animations weren't to signal I'd done something wrong, they were to signal that I was doing something right, and I cannot lie, they're hot. <laughs> if I could do that without, you know, Dying. I mean, that'd be pretty hot. I'm really sorry, y'all are probably now scared of me. Look, I'm fine. I'm okay. I'm not dangerous or creepy or, uh, just, just, don't unsubscribe. Please, just the video. There's however much time left in it. Okay. There are a lot of incidental elements in a lot of the media I consume that I find to be really rather hot, but they're not generally presented as such, and so in most cases, I find myself able to set aside my personal feelings of arousal for the sake of feeling whatever feelings that I imagine the creator wanted me to. I went into the missing completely blind, and though I was pretty sure that this gruesomeness was not intended to be read from a horny perspective, I wasn't completely sure. I knew this game was a queer game, and it was a serious game, and I knew it was a 2D puzzle platformer, but I was otherwise going into it completely and totally unaware of the plot and the tone that it was getting at. As I progressed further, it became quite clear that this was a psychological horror game about a suicidal trans lesbian teenager struggling with a queerphobic family and school life, and as such, I very swiftly stopped seeing the evocation of death and injury as exciting and more, well, still exciting, but in a wholly different light than I had initially. An existential light. In The Missing, dying is required to progress. Isn't that just… life? And now, for an utterly uncontroversial statement, CAPITALISM IS KILLING US! And yet, we depend on its systems and the products it has created. This terrible, hostile, disgusting world is killing us. It is choking us, it is pureeing us, and at the same time, it is forwarding us. Not to an end we actually want, not to a life we'll actually enjoy, but it is forwarding us nonetheless. This world is killing us, and yet we live in it. And a bunch of weirdos like to cut out the first half of that sentence a whole lot so as to argue that we should just ignore everything wrong with the world and go die, I guess. I didn't understand this my whole life, but I have known it my whole life. I have felt it my whole life. 
I have been acutely aware that many of the systems and tools I rely on to do, like, anything either could or are killing me, either directly or indirectly, at the same time as they are helping me, in a way. Like cars, for instance. Cars are killing everyone with that new carbon smell, but I still rode in one to move halfway across the country a few months ago, and that move, uh, went well, and I'll probably have to move again in another car, because there's no way to leave this place without putting oneself in danger of dying to another car. I have made good life decisions. <laughs> It's for that reason that The Missing's gameplay in particular resonated with me so much. JJ has to kill herself again and again and again and again and one last time just to make sure. To progress. Mm, yep, I found that, for lack of a better word, validating. Of course, I find the game validating for more reasons than that, because I'm a lesbian, and as you can almost certainly tell from my voice and the pretty colors, I'm trans. You're probably looking at this thinking I'll go deep into a, an explanation of my own experiences with transphobia and how they reflect the experience and emotions JJ shows in the game, but, well, this is awkward. I can't really tell that story, because I haven't really had that experience. I only realized I was trans, like, at the beginning of this year, so I'm still figuring a lot of this shit out, and in the meantime, I've dealt with only a mild amount of transphobia, because I have no social life and live in an imaginary SJW hug box. I told my mom I was trans, and she said, That's amazing! Now, instead of taking accountability for being a bitch and ceasing to complain, about the exorbitant amount of money I spent on the therapists that were supposed to fix your brain with magic. I can blame everything on that w went wrong with your life on gender dysphoria. I fucking hate my mom, by the way, but at least her reaction was way better than the reaction of JJ's mom, who said something more like, I love you so much, let's pay a therapist to fix your brain with magic. To which JJ says, okay, boomer, I, I mean, writes a suicide note. As a result of never talking to people, and my parents only being mildly progressive liberal democrats, at least as far as I can tell, the only tangible transphobia I faced is some slurs and a few transphobic comments on my YouTube videos online, some misgendering offline by people who I don't know, have nothing to do with my life, and can kindly fuck off. I have, however, felt the intangible transphobia of our current capitalist disorder, because if I hadn't, I'd probably be a good chunk of the way to having boobs by now. My YouTube friend, Soft and Hollow, who, disclosure, is a patron of mine and also a very friendly girl who did a voice in a video that I made, thank you very much, made a video about the missing wherein she highlighted how the dismemberment is evocative of trans dysphoria, and in a separate video about the game Anatomy, spoke at some length about her own dysphoria experience. I found her commentary intriguing, because my trans experience is more social dysphoria than the sort of physical dysphoria that she highlighted. I mean, my body is important to me, and I do have dysphoria, but I'm very acutely aware that it's linked to me wanting to be treated as the gender that I am, rather than the gender that I was assigned. For much of my life, I've never really particularly cared how I look. Most people I've met have complimented me, commenting on how I'm such a pretty boy, or whatever, and I hate that, and I've deliberately put very deliberate little effort, no effort, into having any distinctive identifying features, but I've never really held that much active disdain for my appearance so much as how I've been treated for looking how I do. I suppose that may be making a big deal and saying a pile of words just to split a hair or two here and there. There's a fair bit about my body that I really 
don't like for a lot of reasons, both internal and external, but it's complicated. The point is, I think that if the oppressive social institutions of cis-heteronormativity that we live with didn't exist, I might not really give that much of a fuck about my body, and I'm keenly aware of this because I already don't give that much of a fuck about my body. I give a fuck about what people think of my body and how they treat me as a result of it, but that's not the same thing. It's, you know, it's different. Because I've not been aware of my transness for very long and have never had to directly confront transphobic individuals or ignorant cis people, my dysphoria and my understanding of it is very different from what is described by Soft and by JJ in the game, and, well, I don't yet intimately know all of the ways in which it is different. It overlaps, but it's different, and I only know that it is. And I'm sure that, given time, my understanding will change. Maybe in a year or two, I'll look back at this video and be like, wow, that sure did not stick. We'll see. The missing's preoccupation with death and mortal injury persists through its story, and especially its ending as JJ's dream continues. She hangs herself, unable to overcome her distress, and we witness this mind-rending cutscene. We just brought you of shapes. What does that mean to live? Well, we just brought you of shapes. Why make something feel real? Inside and outside. Time check in changing. That was my mother's finger. And the startling declaration of 100 years later. JJ's personal anguish is contrasted against a century of time's passage, a montage of the skies turning, the world burning and returning, those same uncouth skies that roared above all through the game's environments, and I am reminded of my own wretched thoughts of an insignificant unseen death in the blind eyes of the universe, both the fear I have of that and the perverted solace I seek within that idea. The world will end without JJ. The world will end without me. That's terrifying, but strangely comforting. That we will die, and that we will statistically ultimately not be remembered, and nothing we do will matter much to anyone or anywhere is a notion that, very naturally, very humanly, most of us are not typically willing to confront. For me, though, I feel reassured by that idea. If it doesn't matter one way or the other, then surely there's no reason not to try. We have the rest of our lives to see, and besides, maybe death is okay. None of us have any authority to speak on what the meaning of our existence is. If we were born to have sex, if our death is permanent, if our lives do have meaning, what I just said just now, that statistically we won't matter or be remembered? Did you like it when I said that? Maybe you didn't, and you can say, screw that bitch! It's fine, I'm okay with it. You're allowed to decide what your life and your death means to you, as long as you're not taking anyone else's meaning away. This by the way, this screen that I've been hovering on, these copy-pasted frames, is not how the missing ends. Its proper ending is a great deal more optimistic. I won't recap the ending, because I want people to actually play the game, because it's really good. If you really want a YouTube human to tell you all about it, just watch Soft's video. Suffice it to say, JJ gets the chance to choose her life's meaning and get married in her dream anyway, and I'm sure, eventually, in her real life as well. I don't know if this video that I wrote made any sense, but I hope it did. If you liked it, please consider clicking the YouTube buttons, watching my other videos, and supporting me on Patreon if you're not weirded out by my death tangent. I swear, I, I don't usually do those. Thank you for watching.